Welcome back. We are here for the final show of this week and of the first day of June. Can you imagine we're already June 1st, like six months into 2023. It has just flown right by, right? So let's get into the incredible Dr. Jonathan Hayes. We're going to we're going to bring something different. We're going to bring some gospel. That's right. Miss Liz is bringing music. We're bringing an artist. We're bringing something different to the table tonight. This morning, we started with miscarriages and child loss. Then we jumped into paranormal activities and investigations. Now we're doing music. We're just going to ease it right out. And who knows? Maybe we'll even get Dr. Jonathan to sing. So disclaimer for Miss Liz's Tea Times live show. Miss Liz and myself is going live using StreamYard. Before leaving a comment, please grant StreamYard permission to see your name at StreamYard.com. Please be advised that the content brought forward for any Tea Time show hosted by myself, Miss Liz, is always brought forward in good faith. However, may bring forward dialogues and opinions that are not representative of my platform. The facts and information are perceived to be accurate at the giving time of airing. All Tea Time guests and audience participants are responsible for using their good judgment in taking any action that may relate to the discussion. The content brought forward may include discussion for some where they may be emotionally at risk. It is significant to know that this show is engaging in discussion forms only to offer and inspire awareness and connection and is not providing therapeutical advice. If you have any questions about the disclaimer or the panelist discussion, you may freely contact me, Miss Liz, through my email at bookingmissliz at gmail.com. Moving forward, should you choose to voluntarily participate in tonight's show in any aspect, I myself, Miss Liz, welcomes you. And should you decide that the show is not made for you at this time, I respect your wishes and will see you at a later show at a later date and time. And again, all tea times are done on Thursday this year in 2023. Yeah, we're already 2023. And if it's not on a Thursday, it's a rescheduled tea time. So that'll be a Monday or choose it. Now, let me get into who Dr. Jonathan Hayes Hayes is. I, I don't even know if I'm saying his last name right. I'm going to get him to say it when he comes out. But I have an award-winning recording artist from Gulfport, MS. I'm, I'm, I'm Mississippi, I'm thinking okay who has a passion to drive music as far as his mission reaches he has shared the stage with some of the biggest names in the gospel industry he is a five-time international best-selling author mental health coach serial entrepreneur and motivational speaker who excludes his anointing through his sound and passion to sing with a deep revelation of how God has been in his source. So let me welcome Dr. Jonathan Hayes and let's spill a good strong tea with a little bit of gospel. Welcome, Dr. Jonathan. Hello. Then, so am I saying your last name right, Dr. Jonathan? Haynes. Hayes. Hayes. <laughs> I can I can get that little Mississippi uh, accent in there, even right. though I'm from Canada, right? right. So Dr. Jonathan, let's know who who you are. Let's start with the little boy to who you are now. 
Yes, I was a little boy from Gulfport, Mississippi, who always had a dream to sing. And so I was in the youth choir and little boy just opened up his mouth and knew that there was a gift from God. And so from the age of six, I haven't turned away. I've been singing. I'm 27 years old now. And so it hasn't been easy leading up to this point. But I'm grateful that I'm still here. And many people don't don't know because I'm new to the candidate area. Uh, I tried to commit suicide three times at 14, 18, and 20. And I'm, I'm grateful to God that I'm still here. I went through depression. I was smoking. I was doing things I had no business doing. I was hanging out with gangs. But God truly changed my life for the better. And from six years old to now, I'm a living example of how he can flip the script and make a change in your life. And so that's a little background of me. And I'm so excited that I got the opportunity to be on this platform to a newer audience to know about me. So thank you again for having me. So Dr. Johnson, what got you into the gospel? Yes, I grew up in the church. I've been in church all my life. I got baptized at six years old, and there's nothing that I don't know of. Church has been my life. And so I've been in church ever since I was a little baby. I knew that I wanted to get baptized at six. My mama asked me, and so that's what got the gospel music. I've been asked to do R&B and all that, but gospel is the root because it saved my life when I was going through a tough time. So, Dr. Jonathan. Mm -hmm. You mentioned suicide attempts three times. And I want to get into this because mental health is really important and we need to get this out there, right? Mm -hmm. Men do hurt too. And I want you to express yourself as a Black African man, how you felt about the mental health industry helping you out. Yes. And so that's why I became a mental health coach. I just got my certification over three months ago. And so it's simply just me being who I am, being vulnerable, telling my story, because a lot of men don't tell that they went through these things. And so for the past three to four years, when I wrote my first book, I poured my heart out about this. And so someone came up to me and said, won't you add mental health to your degree since you always talking about suicide depression? And so I thought that as an African-American man, that you don't see a lot of mental health coaches out there. And so it was my duty to educate myself, to know what I'm talking about, not just what I've experienced, but to educate myself of what I'm doing. And so at that time, you know, in my community, we don't believe in going to therapy. Church is the only answer. You pray. And so at that time, all I did was go to church, pray and talk to the pastor. But it was almost my third time that I tried to commit suicide at 20 when I went to seek help because I said, I know that church is good for me, but I need to seek out outside help. And so I started going to therapy. I started speaking to someone to tell me that it's okay to go to church and do this, but here are some steps to maneuver yourself to be back where you want to be into a great mindset, a mindset, excuse me. So after that, I found resources and I've been telling people how to live their life and how to digest what they're going through. And now I have, am a mental health coach. So now I'm telling other people my story to make sure that they don't go through the same thing that I went through and have a licensed person telling them as well. Why is it so a taboo for the Black African uh, families to go and seek help? I think it's just something that was just hereditary or just in sync in us. All, you know, a lot of people in Africa, America, we go to church, we're Baptist, Kojic or whatever, and they tell us that seeking outside help is not of God. It's the enemy or we just don't do it. So we have that stigma that anytime that something's going on with us that we don't seek out help. And it's, uh, it's time for us to change that because a lot of people do go to church. Sometimes people may not be in the church is not free to go into the church because they may have trauma of going to church. They may have trauma in the church. They may have trauma. So sometimes people just don't have that resource. And so now it's my mission. And a lot of people are stepping up in the African-American community to tell, seek help because you don't know what people are going through. You don't know how people are going to adjust to certain situations. I can tell you to pray, but are you going to pray? You know, so it's always a necessity to tell people how to pray, do this, and then give them other resources that might help them along the way. Some people may not go to church. Some people may not want to do therapy, but it's my mission to help people wherever they are. I meet the needs and try to grow them to do what they need to do. And then maybe along the way, they would do what I have told them to do, but it's all about listening to them, seeing where they come from, see what their background and try to give resources to them to make sure they don't go down that downward path again or slip up. 
Yeah, because I have a sister, uh, Cynthia Mobley, and she speaks and she says, I'm not keeping quiet anymore. And she's she's breaking that ice barrier as well in the churches for the black African families, you know. Uh, you know, it, we're all human beings. You know, we all bleed red, you know, They're just skin color doesn't make a difference. You know, I really want to thank you, Jonathan, for being so open and honest about you know, sharing mental health, because I think we need to start sharing it. We need to start speaking of it and stop having the taboo. And today, it just seems to be a taboo day. We don't talk about miscarriages. We don't talk about child loss. We don't talk about paranormal activity and, and spirits and stuff. And we don't talk about mental health. Why is everything staying so hush hush? And do you use your mental health to write songs for? Right. For That's what Yes, I do. And so that's why it always takes me time to put out songs. I just don't put out songs just to put them out. I only have two songs out that I've written by myself. Thank you, Lord, and I love you. And I've been featured on multiple songs, but I want to hear from God. And my past hurts and traumas have, have sent me down the path to write lyrics and to write music. And so when God gives me something, I listen to him and then I write it down. And so like you said, again, before that, I think people are just afraid to speak up. You know, they're just afraid to say anything. And then it took me almost three years because I started sharing my testimony probably around 17 or 18. And I experienced all these things beforehand. But it was a time in my life where I was still going down something and I just couldn't break it. And I remember I shared on Facebook that I tried to commit suicide. I didn't tell my mother. My mother is my number one supporter. I didn't tell anybody because the enemy tricks you to think nobody yeah. cares. And so once you start sharing what you went through, it's just like a sigh of relief. And so many doors open because they see what you have accomplished. They see what you're doing now. And people want to know, how did you overcome that? And so that's why I tell people it's important to share your testimony when it's time. You know, I can't tell people to do it when they're not ready. But I believe once you start sharing, you don't know how the world is going to open up to you. I've been on multiple podcasts, TV shows. I've traveled the world telling my story about what I've overcome. The doors have opened just by sharing that. So it's very important now that I see a lot of more people starting to tell, but when it's your time to tell it, you tell it. I can't let, I can't tell you when, but I believe once you start sharing, you don't know how it's gonna bless someone else. Well, Dr. Jonathan, since you say sharing your testimony, we're gonna, te we're gonna share your testimony of tea tonight. So if I give you the word T-E-A, what words are you gonna give me tonight for tea? Yes. When I think of tea, I think of thriving. It's time to thrive, to be your authentic self, thriving on your mission, thriving on your goals. Stop hesitating and be what you want to be. A lot of times we get distracted because we don't think we have the finances or the resources, but Google is our best friend. How to start a business, how to get an LLC, how do I start this, da, 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 YouTube as well. Thrive to be where you want to be. And what I mean by thriving, just going and making sure that you can do what you want to do, you know? And so sometimes I tell people just thriving just like that. You're trying to do something else. And so that's what I mean by thriving. Thriving and make sure your goals come to fruition. E-educating. Educate yourself on the business. Educate yourself on anything that you want to do in life. I had to educate myself on music. I had to educate myself on mental health. That's why I got a license. Just because I talk about it don't mean I know everything. So sometimes when we go through things, make sure you're educated on the topic that you're talking about. And sometimes you don't know. Some people might try to slip up and say, well, I've seen this and blah, 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 and make sure that you're on top of it. Don't get distracted. Don't let them try to make a fool out of you. Make sure that you're educated on anything that you put your mind and goals to. And then A, I, awareness. Being aware being aware of where you want to go in life. And, 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 you know, sometimes we do get distracted. We do get frustrated. But being aware of your goals, sitting down, writing it down. I always say, write the vision and make it plain. Because once you write it down and you see it, I believe it comes to fruition. Everything that I have poured down, writing it down, has come to fruition. So being aware of your goals, being aware of the position that you want to, and being aware of where you want to see yourself in the next five years. I always give that time frame for the next five years because I can't say in the next year you're going to be a millionaire. It takes time, you know. And so be aware of where you want to be in the next five years. So T is thriving. E is educating. 
and A is awareness. That's my I tea. I love it. It's a strong cup of tea. And this is how we serve tea in this house, right? We serve it strong. And you talked about distraction a lot. I heard that word distraction a yeah. lot. Was there lots of distractions in your life that made you really have to re back, like refocus yourself? Yes, I have so many distractions. I still have distractions because I, I got so much on my plate now. And so sometimes we can get distracted when you're at home, you know, and you have a break to yourself. You can sit down and then you're distracted and watching TV two, three hours and say, hey, I supposed to be doing some work. I supposed to be doing that. And so I still get distracted. But it's always now thinking of new business ideas. How can I push myself farther out and not? And then I have to think to myself, I'm getting distracted on all these other businesses and things that I'm doing. I need to pace myself and do things one by one by one. I, I like to spread myself everywhere. As you can see, my resume, I'm doing everything. But now it's my time not to get distracted by one week. I'm doing everything for music. Next week, my motivational speaking thing. Next week, I'm doing offer. Next things I'm doing business. I'm planning myself so I won't be as distracted as I used to be. And so, and yes. I, I, and Dr. Uh, yeah. Jonathan, I think that's really important that we bring that word distraction in because we do get distracted easy. And you mentioned yeah. Google and TV and, and you know, we, we waste a lot of time. You know, yes, we yeah. need to get really refocused. Yes. And I'm really, really having a good strong tea here with Dr. Jonathan Hay Hayes. Hayes, right? Hayes. Yes, Hayes. I, I got to get that Mississippi accent in there. <laughs> but tonight we want to talk about a lot of things. We want to talk about mental health. We want to talk about music. We want to talk about the gospel. We want to talk about books because you've written books as well. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about colors. We're going to talk about all of that good stuff. So if anybody would like to share this tea time, go ahead and share it. Just share it out to your friends. Get it out there. And let's just share, share, share. Because these tea times actually do make a difference. They actually impact lives. And, you know, and you get a cup of tea in a different way. So there's not a beverage here. We're, we're not serving beverages. We're serving real life tea. So Dr. Jonathan, I want to get into these books. Yes. Tell me a little bit about your books. Yes, I started my first book during the pandemic, and now we're in number five. And so all of them are anthologies, which I am so grateful to be a part of, which sometimes anthologies is a new thing in 2023, and it started in 2019 and probably beforehand. But I didn't get the notice until 2019, which you just write one simple chapter in a book with so many amazing authors, you get to connect with so many people. And so my very first book was called Make It Happen, to find the odds to make things happen. And so I shared my testimony in that book and that book has changed my life. Everything except being a gospel recording artist came after this book. Cause I had so, I was only mailing this book and it was 29 successful women. And they took me under their wing as their little brother and pushed me to speak in conferences. They put me on their shows. They put me everywhere to get my statement out and to get my testimony out. And so all the businesses, podcasts, clothing lines started by them. And so I want to thank the Bust in the Seat Queen, Miss Kern Chair, for giving that first book. And it became a bestseller. All the books are best-selling books. And so the second one was called Boss Your Lane for the Novus Entrepreneur, giving advice to the new entrepreneur or entrepreneur has been in the game for 30 years, but you have new insight and new knowledge. We had people in Bitcoin. We had people baking. We had all type of business owners in this book giving advice. The third book was called Yes You, Yes Now. Women went in business. I was a Ford author for this amazing book. It was over 30 women. Women went into business telling their testimonies of how they became successful. And then my fourth book was a devotional. Uh, I take God and his word and follow, which is a devotional. I put my prayers and everything that I do to motivate myself. And then this fifth book that just came out two or three weeks ago, The Heart of a Black Man, over 30 African-American successful men was in this book. And this book was very passionate of mine. I've done a lot of books, but it was so close because you don't get a lot of men in anthologies. And so it was 30 black men, over 30, I think it was 35 black men telling their stories of overcoming odds as an African married, to find the odds and becoming successful. And so all those books are on Amazon. You can go to my author page on Amazon, type in Dr. Jonathan Haynes, all my books are there and just get a copy. It's sure, all of them sure to bless your life. So can they find these books on your website? 
Yes, if you go to my website, you can order directly from me. On my link, it says, as soon as you type it in, it says, book Dr. Jonathan Haynes for your next event. You click that. You can put in your information and say, I want to get a copy from you. And so if you do that, I will get my assistant to get it done. And then we'll get the order in. If you want an autograph or something like that, because Amazon, you don't get percentages. So if you want something from me, go to my website. Tell me how many books you want, which book you want, and then we will go from there. So what has it brought to you by writing in these books for yourself? What message has it given you? It's given me the hope to stay encouraged because a lot of people have told me that my chapter has changed their lives. And you don't know what you're sharing because I was a newly entrepreneur. And it's people that's been in the industry 40 years telling me that my chapter have given them something to look forward to. And I'm like, I haven't been in business that long, but it's just given me the encouragement that my chapters are changing lives. And so these books have very has been very inspiring for the world, but it's been inspiring to me because it's telling me that I didn't know that I wanted to be an author. I was afraid. I didn't think I could write anything. But once you start, the, the chapters just start flowing. And so it's just giving me the courage to say that my works and what I'm writing is making an impact in today's society and in the world. And I really like that you had 35 men come forward because it, it is true. Men are coming out slowly with their stories and, and they have stories too. You know, I'm not just a woman, woman's right here. I am about the boys too, because I have a son. So I want those same services for my boy, you know? Yes. Um, and it, it's empowering when you write with anthologies. I've written in a few as well, uh, Dr. Jonathan, and you get to meet some really incredible people and you make friendships and you can collaborate together. Have you ever worked with anybody that you've written with? Yes. In the first book, mostly all of the books, I've collaborated with some of them, but mostly most of all the books that I have been a part of came from the first book. They did their own anthologies. And so, as I said, mostly everybody that's been in these anthologies have partnered with me or did something. And so I've worked with so many amazing people. So that's what I said. You don't know how these anthologies will change your life because there's so many people in the world. You don't know who's going to be a part of this anthology. And then when you share your chapter or you share your testimony, you don't know how that's going to affect. They may say, I want you to come on my show and talk to me, you know? So you don't know how it would change your life. So I always say anthologies are a great impact because you never know who's in the book or how it's going to change your life. So now I want to get into you. You just mentioned podcasts again. We're going to get into the podcast now because Dr. Jonathan Hayes is a podcaster host as well. So I want to get to know a little bit about your show. What do you do on your show and what kind of guests do you have? Yes. And so this podcast is in season two and I'm not as faithful as I should be. It's the first season was a halt after that. It was almost almost two years. Season two has a couple of episodes and we're going to get back into the journey. But I've been extremely busy doing so many things. But the comeback podcast is everything that haunts you or try to destroy you. You came back on top. So I've had artists. I had football players. I've had people that was a prostitute and changed their life for the better. I had somebody that was addicted to pornography and now they've been successful. So it's just so many things that, you know, people want to look at you differently. They don't think that you can overcome things. And so I have people on there sharing their testimonies or went through a journey that may not have been easy or was looked upon, but they came back on top or are now successful. And so the Comeback Pies is available anywhere that you can stream. We're starting back up, but we have the first season. We have a couple of episodes of season two. It's called the Comeback Podcast. It's thoroughly going to bless you. So, yes, Comeback Podcast is amazing, and I got to get back on it because I'm not as consistent as I supposed to be it's supposed to be every second friday but we have month splits in but that's why i'm saying getting distracted so <laughs> the, the distraction is there dr johnson's got to get focused because he's got to come back yeah. <laughs> so, so how yeah. did you get the name come back yes the comeback podcast came to me like everything all these things came during the uh pandemic and so we were right in time that I was like, I'm ready to come back to music. I'm ready to come back and travel and sing. And so they clicked to me, Comeback Podcast. And so I was seeing everybody doing these podcasts. And so I said, let me just name it the Comeback Podcast. And so it's probably telling me to come back now because I ain't been there in a while. So it's a, you know, it's a therapeutical laugh with that podcast because I, 
it's a it's a passion of mine because so many people love the podcast and I'm not doing this as opposed to, but we're not, we're going to get back rolling with that. But it's truly been a blessing to the world. It's a blessing to me as well. Well, we got to just get Dr. Johnson to come back. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of yeah. like it because it's really catchy, right? Yes. And, you know, it's like when people come here on tea time, like when, when jo Dr. Johnson came here, you know, I was like, nope, we're going to spill a different type of tea. We ain't drinking tea. Uh, Miss yeah. Liz got her tea. I got tea here, guys. I'm drinking tea, but it, we ain't serving beverage tea here. We're serving life. We're serving people's testimonies and, you know, the the examples that they set for their society, their communities, their families. So by getting your license as a certified mental health coach, how, how do you feel? I feel blessed, I feel grateful, and I feel achieved. And this came by someone that I did a clubhouse speaking thing from. And she's been following me. Her name is Dr. Mary Huntley. And she wanted me to be on her podcast, and I just shared my testimony on the podcast because it was mental health awareness in May. And so a couple of days later, she said, I want to give you a free scholarship to Light University for your mental health coaching license. And this is almost $5,000. And she, I got it for Simply Free. That's why I say favor and fate and being connected to the right people. And so we did it. And I thought it was going to be, I'm like, oh my goodness, going to school, doing all these things and trying to do school and doing these hours. But I sat down and did it. I took two to three weeks and I accomplished all those little hours because I had time to do it. And so it feels amazing. I've been sharing about mental health for years, but now I have the education and the knowledge and I have the scriptures and I have the flow up and I have people backing me up to be an example and to give people real uh, documentation or real excerpts of how to move along in mental health. You know, I can tell you in my mind because I'm good at articulating and I know what I'm doing because I was called to do this, but having the educational part along with what I'm doing is a great cause. And so I feel great. I feel amazing. And we're just starting rolling and it's been great thus far. And it's God's blessing, right? In the right room at the right time, God yes. will bless us. You know, yes. we really need to keep that focus on the, the message and the reason why he puts us in situations and surroundings and certain people will be like oh i don't know why i'm here what am i doing here you know and clubhouse has some amazing people that are sitting in those rooms so yes. check it out i i highly recommend because in season two i got a lot of people from clubhouse that came wow. on tea time uh you know children's authors and uh, personal stories a lot of differentness and it's almost like your podcast to come back right we got to get those stories out we got to just come back we got to yeah. show what we did with what we learned, you know, the lessons and the blessings that we were given in life, we got to take them and turn them into a positive. So I want to get into the music because I'm a gospel lover. I love gospel music. If anybody knows Miss Liz, that's where I go to, especially when I'm down, the Lord's got my back and I'm just blasting the tunes. So what yeah. is your number one favorite song of and favorite artist of the gospel industry? Yes, my favorite artist is Karen Clark Sheard from the Clark Sisters. That's my number one favorite. I love Karen Clark Sheard dearly. I've met her, I sung along with her, and it's just I've been I've been listening to her for years. And then I have a second one, Leandria Johnson. So I'm in the mix. I love everybody, but my go-to is Karen Clark Sheard because she's truly changed my life. And when I was going through things, I could listen to her, still listen to her. I go on YouTube and watch her for hours. That's how much of a blessing she's been in my life and the impact that she has in my life as well. So we have a question here for you, Dr. Johnson. Mm -hmm. Johnson. What artists have you worked with? Yes, I've worked with so many. I've worked with Ja'Kalen Carr, Karen Clark Shear, Kiara Shear, Tamala Mann, David Mann, Jonathan Nelson, Brian Courtney Wilson, Tasha Cobbs Leonard, the great Rance Allen, the list goes on, Sir the Baptist um, and church people, um, Donna Lawrence, and the list goes on. I've worked with so many people that it literally blows my mind. I'm from Mississippi, you know, they think the little town, but he has elevated me in two positions. So I've worked with mostly everybody in the gospel. And so it's been an amazing feeling, and I know it's more to come, so I'm anticipating it, and I'm so excited about it. Well, we have a we have a viewer that has jumped into the studio. And some of the viewers that are listening out there, we know you're on all of the multiple platforms because Ms. Liz is just streaming all over the world here. 
uh, I want to thank you all for joining and popping in. You know, we all make a difference when we all just tune in, you know, tune in and share, share this tea time. If you want to listen for five minutes and then listen again in another hour, you can, you know, listen to it at your own pace and your own just no distractions, no distractions. We're doing no distractions with Dr. Jonathan here. You know, that's going to be my tagline with you, Dr. Jonathan, is no distractions. <laughs> We're going to come back and no yeah. distractions. <laughs> so I, yeah. I, Dr. Jonathan, I want to get into the speaking because you also do speaking. Yes. I became a motivational speaker right after my first book. She is a pusher. I name her the. She is named the Bus and Seat Queen, Miss Kern Cherry, and she put us in magazines. She put on a podcast. She put us on TV shows, and she had a conference coming up. And she put me on her conference, telling my testimony. And so after that, I've worked with people like Les Brown and Dr. Cheryl Wood, so many motivational speakers, Les Brown. I've been on stages that people have been in this industry for over 30 years. And it was my first, second, almost four years in this game. And so I'm just like, he puts you in places that men don't think you should be in. So I've been speaking all over virtually. And now we're getting into you know, traveling, doing it because people are now having these conferences again. And so my next one will be July the 7th. I'll be in Atlanta, Georgia. So is anybody there that can see me in person? I'm speaking at a youth and young adult breakfast. It's called leveling up or rising up to be the youth you want to. So more information to come. But I've been speaking and it's truly been changing my life. And I'm just truly grateful that I'm platforms like this. Now I'm in new areas. I'm and being surrounded with so many amazing people. And I just got a new speaking engagement in Canada as well. So it's oh. like, I'm like, okay, God, what are you doing? I was like, I'm Where are you going speaking. in Canada? Yes. I'm like, are you going? coming near me? Because if you are, I'll go check you out. <laughs> yes. And so I'm like, I'm doing this podcast. And then I got a speaking engagement to do another conference in Kansas. I'm like, God is truly elevate me now. I've been prophesied over that I will reach the world and now it's happening. And so I'm so grateful and so excited. So speaking has changed my life as well. And so I'm just ready to see what God is going to take me from here. So do you think he's going to pour another song out soon? Because I know that you wrote, thank you. You wrote, I love you. <laughs> and then you also wrote, or you sang, A Change is Coming by Sam Cooke. Yes. People, I that's one of my number one songs that people ask me to sing. Do you know how people say, if you wrote a song, what would it be? People love to hear me sing, A Change Is Gonna Come. Anywhere that I go, I have to sing it. And now it's my mission to put out music, but I think I'm going to redo A Change Is Gonna Come in my version because people love to hear me sing it. So we're going to do that. And it's time for new music. I'm trying to put out a new single in the next couple of months. So I'm going to start getting in the studio, putting out a single and, and trying to do an album. I only put out singles, but A Change Is Gonna Come is going to be a single and I'm going to put out new music. It's coming soon. That's my passion. It's time for me to do it. Well, you're coming back, right? We're going to get you to come back. back. <laughs> We're getting Dr. Johnson to come back in a lot of ways. Because of just no distractions. Hashtag no distractions. Yes. <laughs> Dr. Johnson, I want to talk to you about recording. As an artist, how does it feel to go into recording studio? I can say that it's exciting, but it's also nerve-wracking. Because you have to record and record, record sometimes for hours to get the right parts. You know, people, I thank God that I've been with some amazing people, Grammy Award winning, Sir the Baptist. And I could just say recording music with him. He made me repeat parts over and over. Literally, I think I said the same thing for three hours. He pushed me and I'm grateful for that. He made me sing parts for hours and hours and hours. I'm like, why is he doing this? But when you did <laughs> I've yeah. already done it. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. To I was getting frustrated because I'm like, I've never been in types of situations like this that you're repeating the song over and over. But when you hear it, you hear the blends and you hear the melodic tones. And so I love being in the studio, but as well, we're working. It's a job. You know, you have to get the right sounds. You got to get the right notes. You can get hoarse. You can do all those things. But I love what I'm doing. And so I'll see in the next couple of weeks when I get back how I'm going to love it. But I love going to the studio. It's like home. You get into those things. They play music. And then you just can lay on the couch and just start writing music. So I love it. It's, 
I, I, I asked you that question because a lot of people out there that want to be, become recording artists, is, you know, it's not just two minutes in the studio. You know, you're repeating and repeating and repeat. You need that perfect sound, right, when you're recording it. You know, when you're singing live, it's different. You still need to sing as well. But in the recording studio, you need it pitch perfect. Yes. So what has that taught you about yourself, repeating and repeating and repeating? Because you said you were frustrated. You wanted to go. But at the end of it, you look at the beautiful pro uh, the piece, and then you're like, oh, my God, okay, I, I understand now. Yes, because, you know, a lot of times in life, we just rush things. Yeah. And I can put it into the sense of we do that in everyday life. We're trying to rush success. We're trying to rush being something that we know we're not ready for when God is trying to smooth it out, take you by step by step and to do it slowly. But, you know, we're trying to rush and do everything. And then we get mad and frustrated and say we want to give up business. We want to give up singing. We want to give up everything that we're trying to do because we're trying to do something on our time when God is trying to do it on his time. And so at that time, I was getting frustrated because like I know I'm doing these parts right. They sound good. So why am I keep doing it? But it's not on my time. I'm not a producer. I'm not all these things. He's been in the industry for years. He knows the perfect pitch. He knows the perfect sound. And so that's the same thing with God. God knows everything about us. He knows how to direct us. He direct us. He knows how to plan us. He knows how to position us. So wait on him and let him direct the past. And I think that's why sometimes we get so frustrated because we're trying to do things on our time and not his time. I think that's where we all get frustrated, right? We're all like, okay, I'm, I'm ready now. I'm done it. I've, uh, you know, like, yeah. but then he puts no, another five minutes, no, another 10 minutes. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and then we're like, okay, I already did this. I don't know why I'm redoing this, but at yeah. the end of it, then we see the magic and the piece that is put together. And then we're like, aha, now I got it. You know, yes. we have, we have to have those aha moments, you know, yeah. where we just go like, oh, I got it. I understand it now. We got to slow down. We got to slow that tea down. You know, we got to, we can't just be spilling that stuff all over there. We got to take our time and, and yes. really enjoy the flavor and the blend of it. Yes. Now I want to, I want to get in and talk to John. I want to get into music. You, you sing gospel, but do you yeah. sing anything? Do you sing anything else? I sing other things. I record and I travel the world singing gospel, but I was just saying a change is going to come. It's not a gospel song, but it's some songs that I do outside of gospel. Like I'm starting to do Dunny Hathaway, a song for you, and it's plethora of other songs, songs that I listened to growing up. So if it's something that I like, I will sing it outside. But right now I only record gospel and do gospel because that's my calling, but I don't mind doing that. And sometimes, you know, people get hesitant. How do you sing gospel want to do these? That's my business. I, you know, that's being God's, you know, sometimes people want to say, how can you sing these songs? You do this, but you know, sometimes you just let God handle the situation and you do you. And so yeah. like a couple of months ago, I was at a blues club down here, but let's kind of ground zero. And I sung a change is going to come. It was totally out of my element, but I sung a song that I liked. People loved it, and that's a new genre. After that, I I might bring, you know I always bring God with me, but they might want me to do something that I can connect on another level that some people may not be on right now. I can bring God to them. I can int introduce them something different. So I'm always saying I'm bring God everywhere. So you never know where you are. Different sceneries or whatever. I've sung at plenty of different things. And so I sing gospel and I'll sing something else, but it's all about bringing people closer to God at the end of the day, regardless of what I sing. Well, I think it's really important that we bring gospel to the table, you know, yeah. we bring all the other genres to the table. Why can't we bring gospel to the table? Yes. You know, why are we so scared of the gospel music? It, it's not, it's not going to burn our skins. You know, we're, <laughs> you know, we can really enjoy it and we can really understand the messages yes. and, and, the, and the lyrics in it and the music. Yeah the flow yeah. of the music. So when you're writing your songs, Dr. Jonathan, do you think of somebody special? Do you think of your, like of an event that happened in your life? What, may, how do you write your songs? So I think of events in my life. So I love you. It's like a love song. It's like God talking and I'm talking to him. And so some of the words are saying, hello, 
I'm the one you're looking for. That's God saying, I'm the one who gave my only son that you know I love you. I'm the one who healed you. I'm the one who saved you. And then I'm talking back and saying, I love you so much. You know, thank you, God, for saving my life. And so it's events that I go through or battle with saying sometimes when you go through things, you know, you can get hesitant and you be like, where is God? When God is always there, he's been there. But you have to listen, really tune everything out and tune into him. Say, God, I want to be closer to you. I want to hear you more. And then the songs start flowing and he just pours into me. And so that's why it takes me time to put out songs. I just don't put out songs just to put them out. I love the type of craftsmanship that I have. And so I've been through some more experiences in this time. People want music. They're always saying, when is the album? I haven't even put out an album. I just put out singles. It's time. Like you said, no more distractions. It's time to put out a whole album and put out this music. So I'm going to do it. And so it's just, I, all I can say is simply time to get back into the studio. It's no, I can't say soon, soon, soon. It's just simply time. Yep. It's time to come back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you see how I put that in there, right? Yeah. We, we, will, we all come back and we're all going to do it because there's no more distractions. Yes. And sometimes that's what we need, right? Is we need that person to just say, you know what? Okay. Enough is enough. It's time to come back. Um, you know, yes. as scared as you are, as distracted as you are, it's time to just come back. Yes. You know? And that would be a nice song to come back to, you yeah. know, that might yeah. be the next single, come back. <laughs> 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 and then you could use that on your podcast. You know, there's always different ways of bringing stuff and coming back, you know, uh, and being unique. I really like the names of your songs. I've listened to your the songs, the singles that you have put out, Dr. Jonathan, and I feel that the the greatness, the gratefulness to the to the Lord for giving you your life, and for having you still here. The word "thank you" we don't say it enough, you know. And by putting that as a song, I think it's really important that everyone go and check out that song. Check out "Thank You," and then go and check out "I Love You." Yes. You, you know. Sometimes we have to say, I love you to ourselves, to the mm -hmm. Lord, to our families. We don't say it enough. And when mm -hmm. I listened to that song, I love you, I felt the message of saying to people who are in your life, I don't know your, st your whole story, Dr. Jonathan, but mm -hmm. I felt like you were telling people, I love you. Listen. Wow. Wow. That's what I got from that song. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a songwriter as well. So I, I, I know how the lyrics for me, the lyrics, the words, it ain't even about the music sometimes. Sometimes it's just the words, you know, yeah. because we find a tune afterwards, right? We write that song and then we're like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we get that beat going, you know? So when you write a song, do you find a tune first or do you find a lyrics first? Like, how does that work for you? I think it's 50-50. I can hear lyrics first and then I can hear a song and then I direct it. I can hear the song maybe slow tempo or something and then I hear the beat and I just change the lyrics into different words or put poop it up or make it slow because sometimes you know you want to do a slow song you know a worship song but most of my songs are upbeat because it's just the beats that I like and then change it it's supposed to be a slow song but I change it because I love sounds I love symbols I love horns I love all that types of stuff and so mostly I'll write the lyrics and then I say it's going to be one thing, but when I hear the music is totally different. So I say 50-50. Yeah, because when I went to go and listen to your your singles today before the show, I was like, okay, it's going to be a nice, smooth song. And it wasn't. It was like a nice little jiggy jiggy, you know, like you were moving like in church, like you're getting up and you're really just appraising it and you're really just moving, right? Yeah, and we yeah. move sometimes in life, you know, we sit so long we stay still so long and in church the lord pushes us and he directs us and he guides us to move and that's yeah. what i got from your two songs and then i went and i listened to the changes coming by sam cook and i was like oh look at him go there like you were doing like all of these different rhythms and rhymes and i was like oh i like it i like it a lot so i i really encourage people to go and check out the change is coming on your website because they are all on your website and people can really check them out. You know, uh, you blew me away because I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting this because you're called the songbird of the South. So I'm thinking, oh, this nice little 
songbird just to come in and know you you had me moving i was like oh okay we're doing this <laughs> yes i get that i get that all the time i used to have like a voice like that and then god blessed me to just he he blows my mind every time i open my mouth and so i got songbird of the south years ago by people in the community and people around the world but it came from someone from my church she was almost a hundred and she said, there goes my little songbird. Are you singing this Sunday? Are you singing this Sunday? She said, that's my songbird. It was another lady in church. And so they gave me that name and then it stuck with it and people cherished it. So I cherished it because I was what, 14, 15. And there's people that listen to my music or just listen to me in their hundreds saying, I love your music. I love your sound. And so that's why I'm like, okay, my music is touching all generations. And so that's what Songbird of the South. So people always think the logo when they go, I just started, I had YouTube, but now I've been posting all my stuff on YouTube as well. So you can see all new clips of me singing engagements or whatever, changing on the phone, whatever, all on my YouTube page at Dr. Jonathan Haynes' old website. But you can see over the years my voice has changed and times has changed because when i get on the stage to minister it's not this it's somebody that's totally different so if you look at some of them videos you're gonna be like that's not the same dr john <laughs> right that's what i got i was like yes what? what's it's going totally on here different i'm gonna get that right now when you go go to the youtube page because it's a lot of more videos that i upload you're like who is that so Yes, that's what that's what I got when I went to listen. I was getting all ready for this little songbird of the South, like so something really smooth. And then I was like, "Oh, oh, okay, he took me this way, did he?" Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I know there's a song in you called "Come Back" because you are coming back, and and yeah. and that. I want to get into now. I want to talk about the H and the J H ministry. I want to talk about a little bit about that. So what do you do with the JH ministry? Jonathan Haynes ministry started November of 2019, which is my music. All the businesses I have under that, which is JH Consulting, Songbird Productions, everything dealing with music, doing voice lessons, telling people how to be an entrepreneur, lifestyle coaching. So everything is under Jonathan Haynes Ministries. And so it's all my businesses put up into one. You know, you always have to have a safety net. You never get distracted. So I have four to five businesses all under that as well. And so we have Jonathan Haynes Ministries, where I travel the world with speaking and singing, uplifting, Jay's consulting with lifestyle coaching, motivational speaking. Songbird Productions is giving people voice lessons, telling people the right paths of being an independent artist and getting them connected with people that I've been accomplished with or going to accomplish with because I'm always helping people. And I believe that's the reason why God blesses me, because I'm a person who wants to see people win. You know, sometimes we get in this industry, people don't want to see you father them. If you father me, congratulations. I know my time is coming afterwards. And so it's a plethora of business under there. And so we've been doing it for the past three years and God has blown my mind 100% of everything during the pandemic. I say this, the pandemic really changed my life. I was an artist and I, the pandemic put me into a different diversion because I'm used to traveling, singing. We wasn't making the money. So God said, I put all these things in you. Now it's time to put on your big pants and see that sometimes you never know singing may, my voice might be gone. You know, you know, something might happen. Now I have other resources to back up everything, but we, the devil is a lie. My voice ain't never going nowhere, but it was an example analogy. But I'm just saying I have other resources and other things going for me that if something happens, I am stable to do something. Because last year I didn't do much of singing. People thought I stopped singing because my businesses, my books, speaking and all those took off. So I was barely singing. I was singing there, but I wasn't. Now I'm singing, I'm traveling, I'm speaking, I'm doing so much now, but it's all about just pacing yourself. And so Let's see what God has for me next. So I'm just truly grateful and just not getting distracted and doing what I need to do. <laughs> right? Hashtag no distractions for Dr. Jonathan. <laughs> right? We're not doing distractions with Dr. Jonathan. <laughs> Miss Liz is going to watch Dr. Jonathan and I'm going to make sure he come back for all of you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I want to get into, I, I asked all my guests these questions, what their favorite color is. And you gave me the color red. Why red? 
I don't know. It's just something about the color red. Red has been my color for years. You see my logo, John Haynes Ministries, is red. I used to just love the color red. My room used to be red. It's just something. Now they say the blood of Jesus, you know. But I just love red. It's been a passion of mine. And then I think it was changing because I saw like a yellow. I think I just like bright colors, you know. So it was between yellow and red. But red is just something about if I see red shoes or red stuff, it just, I'm just glued in. And so I've <laughs> I, love, I was a baby. So that's how I just love it. Well, wasn't there a famous basketball player who had red shoes, air shoes? Uh, Jordan. I'm, I'm trying to think of basketball players. Michael Jordan. That's him. Mm -hmm. Didn't he have a pair of red shoes when he first started? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the shoes. I love Yes, I red shoes, red everything. I used to have every, back in the day. I had red shoes, uh, watches, hats, everything. I was really into it. I still love red, but I'm not like I used to be. High school, everything had to be red, and all that. Middle school, you know, trying to just be everything, but red. <laughs> <laughs> so we have another question here for you, Doctor Jonathan. Do you speak mm -hmm. in schools? Yes. I do speak in schools. Whenever somebody wants me, I'm there. And so, like I said, I do all genres because now I'm doing this youth prayer breakfast in uh, East Point, Georgia, speaking to young, young children and young adults into their 20s. So, yes, I speak at schools. If you got my phone number, email 228-346-1535. She has it there. You can reach me anywhere. I am available for you because it's all about sharing my story. I'm only 27 years old. I'm the youngest person to receive an honorary doctorate. I received the Presidential Lifetime Achievement Award from President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris. And so, you know, it's just telling people where I come from to now. So I'm always trying to uplift people saying no matter the age, you can do anything that you put your mind to. So I would love to speak at schools or wherever you want me. I'm available for you as long as my dates are available. So go ahead and book. Go ahead and book. <laughs> Well, Dr. Jonathan, you mentioned that award and I was coming right into that award because I do a lot of homework <laughs> mm -hmm. and you got the Presidential Lifetime Achievement Award in 2023. Do you want to share a little bit on what that award is and who gave you that award? Yes, I got it January, the end of January, I think it was January 29th, 2023 in Jackson, Mississippi. The Presidential Lifetime Achievement Award comes from the President of the United States, Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris, or whoever the president is at that time. And it's your volunteer service award, the impact that you have in the community and around the world. So mine was dedication in music and business. And to be the youngest person in Mississippi, I can't say around the world, maybe who knows, I've been a first in a lot of things, but to be only 26 at the time, to receive a Presidential Lifetime Achievement Award was huge because you don't see a lot of people doing that. Usually in your 40s, your 50s, and 60s, it's over 30 years of impact. And I only started my business almost three to four years, and I've been single since 18. And so to get something like that, I have gotten stuff from the governor as well, from Tate Reeves of Mississippi, Impact and Music. So to get something like that, it's just true to saying that my works are doing what they need to do. And so it's a huge honor, a huge award to get something from the president. And he signed it. It's huge. And so that's what that award is. I got it at the beginning of this year. And it's truly been amazing. So you mentioned an honorary doctorate. Do you want to tell the viewers out there that may not know what an honorary doctorate is? Yes, I received an honorary doctorate April 2022 from someone that I'm grateful for that was in one of my books. And so honorary doctorate is seeing what you have done in the community and a university or college will give you or gift you with a doctorate. Mine is in Christian leadership and PhD, but they gift you instead of having to do all those courses. And I thank God that people work so hard to do it. But I was blessed and fortunate to receive one by not doing that, but by my impact in music and in the community. So honorary doctorate, you know, sometimes go to celebrities, you see a lot of celebrities getting on people that's making true impact. So it's just something that people see what you're doing in a campus or a college want to honor you by giving you something like that. So that's what it is. And there, and there really are a blessing because, you know, a lot of people put a lot of volunteer time in, a lot of services, a lot of, uh, you know, in your community in, in Mississippi, is there anything that you volunteer to do besides yes. music? 
Yes, I'm always giving back to the community. I used to do Feed My Sheep down here where you give to the homeless and things like that. Anything that I can do, I give my services of time or music. We have a Juneteenth festival coming. Always giving back to the community because you don't want to forget where you come from. You know, a lot of time, a lot of big people farther than me forget where they come from. They don't want to support people. They think they're too high and mighty. They got all the things that they want, so they won't even come back to the community and say thank you or just come to get honored with anything. So it's always my obligation to give back because at the four one when you go through some things you want your hometown to be your number one supporters so i always make sure that i'm not just singing i'm making an impact and a change in my community as well well i want to thank you for your services because you know there's a lot of people out there like you mentioned and dr jonathan that don't go back right uh mm -hmm. you know you got to always remember where you come from your grassroots where you come from you know yeah stay stay humble uh yeah. i want i think so we're wrapping up almost an hour here. we got five minutes left. So I want to get into, Dr. Jonathan, you gave me the word adventurous for yourself. Mm -hmm. As a person, you describe yourself adventurous. So why that word? Yes. Adventurous to me is mean that I do anything that I feel like I want to do. And sometimes, you know, people are afraid. I'm always taking a risk. And, you know, being adventurous, you know, people jumping off mountains. I don't mean like that. I mean. <laughs> I, cause I, uh, <laughs> are you scared of heights? Yes. And yeah, me too. <laughs> I ain't jumping either. <laughs> when I was younger, I used to get on planes and be all fine. And when I get on planes now, I'm just freaking out. But it's all about taking risks. And what I mean by adventure is doing things afraid, start that business, do something, put yourself out there because you don't know. You might get a thousand no's, but that one yes will change your life. So I'm always adventurous for new opportunities, new ways to put myself out there because you never know if you don't ask or put yourself out there. So I'm always trying to be in the new surrounding and just put myself out there. So adventurous for me is always put myself out there and not being afraid of the answer. If it's yes, hallelujah. If it's no, hallelujah, because my those no's are only going to make me work 10 times, 10,000 times harder. I like that you say that because when I get a no, I'm knocking on three more doors. Yes. I'm, I, I'm just like, thank you for that. No, three more people are going to be getting that knock now because of your no. Yes. <laughs> so we're, I want to find out if anybody wanted to reach out to you, how could they reach you? Yes, you can reach me at my business phone number at 228-346-1535. That's 228-346-1535. You can go to my website, jonathanlhaines.com. That's J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N-L-H-A-Y-N-E-S.com. Most likely you can reach me by phone number, but website, if you go to that website, it'll say book Dr. Jonathan Hans for your next event. You put all the information and go straight to our system and we will get it. My phone number is quick as well. Um, I'm on social media sites. Um, on Instagram is I am Dr. Jonathan. Facebook is Dr. Slash Jonathan Haynes. Twitter is J-O-N-L Haynes. Clubhouse is at Jonathan Haynes, but if you want to reach me, phone number, website will get to me fast. Sometimes Messenger works faster because it pops up on your phone. So if you want to DM, go ahead because I get it anyway, anywhere, regardless of where you send it. Just get my information. She has posted as well. So you can reach me by any of those things, and I'll be looking forward to connecting with you all. So any final messages you'd like to give to the younger generation in your family and in your community? Yes, I would tell people to do it afraid. I always say that. Don't let what people say about you or don't let the name say or distract you from the purpose and the calling that God has for you. A lot of times in life, we do get distracted. Like we said, that was the word of the day and we don't come back to what God has given us. And so I want to tell you that don't let nobody tell you what you can and cannot do. Don't be like the the statistics, excuse me, that always just slum down their selves because their mama or whoever telling them they can't be. And they just give up and they go down drugs, they go to alcohol because they know it's a passion on the inside of them and they can't do it. And so they lead to other things. But I want to tell you, you are what God has called you to be. Do it afraid. Flip the script in your life. Be the change that you want to see. Eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard the kind of blessings that's going to fall on you. Do it, do it, do it. Again, you may get a thousand no's, but that one yes will change your life forever. And I can't wait to see what he's going to do in your life. And I'm excited. And tell me how he has changed it for the good of your being. 
Well, I want to really thank you, Dr. Jonathan Haynes, for joining me and sharing such a strong tea. Tonight we were thriving and we're educating and we're bringing the awareness and we're being authentic. We're being our true selves, right? We're just spilling a good, strong cup of tea together. Yeah. And, you know, that's what you got to do sometimes. You just got to make a mess. You got to, you know, but we ain't spilling, spilling. We're just spilling slow flows here. No distractions. Yeah. Hashtags, no distractions. Dr. Jonathan is coming back because Ms. Liz is going to make sure he comes back. You know, yeah. we all come back because we all rise. You know, when the Lord tells us to rise, we rise. So I want to thank you, Dr. Jonathan Hayes, for joining in. I want to thank all the viewers, Dr. Uh, Lachelle, Chanel Randall. I want to thank you for your comments in the studio. I want to thank everybody who tunes in and listens to Tea Time. If you'd like to see all of these Tea Times, you can check out Miss Liz's YouTube channel. Give it a quick subscribe. Ring that bell, and you'll be notified every time we're live because we bring all different flavors of tea to this table. So again, Dr. Jonathan, thank you, and thank you to all the viewers. And if you're watching and replay please push hashtag replay and let me know where you're tuning in so I can give a shout out to those platforms as well. There's so many different platforms out there. So we just keep spreading them and I'll see everybody next Thursday with three new TEAs and three new stories. And who knows, maybe three new countries. We just never know where Miss Liz is going this, this, this month, this week, we have been in the United States. Next week, we might be in the United States, Canada, Australia, Peru. We we don't know where we're going, but you check out the June guests on Miss Liz's website at www.misslizesteatimes.com. All of them are there. RSVP, and I will send you a message to make sure that you're notified when the tea times are coming live. And that's just how we roll at this table. So again, keep it real, stay real, spill your tea, and be blessed. And I'll see you all next Thursday at 10 a.m. 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. with three new guests, three new stories.